Let's take a look at this quantitative comparison problem dealing with ratios. What's going to be a habit in quantitative comparison problems in general we need to break is to always think we've got to calculate the actual value to be able to answer. So rather, especially with ratios, you've got to be aware of what information you have and whether that gives you enough information to compare the two quantities without ever necessarily knowing the individual values. So in this case, we're given a number line. And in this number line, we know a few things. We know for sure x is a negative number. And we know that y plus z, when added together, is a positive number. And for sure, we know z is not equal to 0. Now that we've got a handle on our centered information, let's go to our two quantities. In quantity A, we get y plus z on the top. The one thing we know from the centered information about y plus z is that it is a positive number. And x is the denominator. And one thing we know for certain from the centered information is that x is a negative number. So if you take a positive number and divide by a negative number, for certain we know quantity A is negative. But, how, but one thing we've got to be very clear about, we don't know anything about what actual number quantity A represents. Like negative 2, negative 3, negative a million, we don't know. We just know that it's negative. Let's take a look at quantity B. Now you might be tempted to think y must be positive because y plus z is positive. But knowing that y plus z is positive does not necessarily tell us that y itself is positive. Remember, y could be positive and z could be negative, or z could be negative and y could be positive, or y and z can both just be positive. We just don't know enough about what's going on in quantity B to know exactly whether quantity B is positive or negative. It could be both. Well, the fact is, since we don't really know anything about quantity B, and since it makes it impossible for us to know whether quantity B is positive, negative, or even zero, therefore the relationship can't be determined from this information given. We don't know whether quantity A is the bigger value or quantity B. And if that's the case, our answer choice must be answer choice D. Remember that when you work with ratios that you don't actually have information about the individual variables. Like in this case, we don't have information about x, y, and z. We just have information about the relationships to each other. That becomes a very important distinction to learn from and keep an eye out for while taking this test.